edition of Bama and Bourbon with Aaron Suttles from Yay Alabama. I'm Lance Suttles for the next round. It is on Roll Tide Pods. Like, subscribe, give us that thumbs up. We would appreciate it. It's where we talk a little Alabama and we talk some bourbon. And look at this bourbon we've got. A little Angel's Envy. I love it. I was yeah. very pleasantly surprised to see that on the counter. Yeah, today. Chan doing, uh, doing uh, great work for That's us right. here from uh, the Beverage Place and Pink Package. Yeah, I'm excited about this uh, as we record here on a Monday. Uh, nothing like 2 o'clock in the afternoon bourbon, right? Hey, you got to imbibe sometime. Um, special thanks to uh, Hallmark Construction for letting us snag these glasses. Yeah. How old do you think these glasses are? Oh, these are definitely 70s. 70s. Yeah. 70s. yeah. That's what I was thinking. Cheers. Cheers, bud. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Angel's good. Envy Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished in port wine barrels. So unlike any bourbon you've tried, aged four to six years, and new American white oak barrels, uh, when they finish the bourbon, up to six additional months in port cask. Yeah. Now, what does that do for it? Which means it's no longer bourbon. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, my, she said my mother-in-law loves it when they finish it in a port wine barrel. She likes the flavor of it. Uh, I like it too. It's good. It's just not bourbon. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got good bourbon today. Bad, uh, bad basketball for Alabama. I mean, look, they jump out. Um, when you hit 19 threes and Mark Sears lights them up for 35, you think yeah. you probably get the win. Not only did they yeah. lose the game, they didn't cover. They lost by a half point. I had uh, a plus five and a half. A backdoor cover there for, for Purdue. Listen, Alabama's offense is the number one Ken Palm adjusted offense in the country. Defense, they're in the 80s. Uh, and it, they've lost three of the last five. Yep. And their next two not going to get easier. You no. got a top ten Creighton team that you're on the road against, and then you go play Arizona. Yeah, maybe the best team of college might basketball. Might be the best. And those two teams are both uh, great defensively and pretty good offensively. So uh, Alabama's got his work cut out for them. The yeah. What do you uh, like? I think they've got a lot of talent, and yeah. as you said, I mean, quarter the Ken Palm. I mean, the offense is is fantastic. Right. Yeah. But. His defense. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you can win. I don't want to say championships. Yeah. I don't think you can. How about make a deep march run with no defense? No. I mean, having a great defense allows you just other ways you can win when yeah. the shots aren't falling, as we've seen. And as as good as Alabama has been at shooting the ball over the last three or four years, there are games that you're going to miss. It's just part of the game, and uh, your defense can bail you out. And this this team cannot win that way. Uh, it's Bama and Bourbon with uh, Yay Alabama's. Aaron Suttles, I'm Lance Taylor from the next round. It is brought to you by our friends at the Beverage Place, located next to PGA Superstore on Highway 280. Pink Package, located across from the Target, next to Arby's on 280. One-stop shop, liquor, beer, seltzers, wine, sodas, mixers, cigars, ice, even fresh lemons and limes. They open early, close late, good in. Go see JJ Chan, the fine folks there at the Beverage Place and the Pink Package. Um, so, Alabama getting ready for the Rose Bowl. Yeah. I can't believe we're only two weeks away from Christmas. And three weeks away from that game. That's wild. Yeah. I just got my credential approved email today. So nice. So you yeah. are going. I'm going. I'll are, be there. Are you going to make the uh, pit stop in Vegas with us? I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to do that. I'm working on that. I'll, I'll, we'll see if we can get you accommodations yeah. on that. Cause we'll, and we'll give you guys more information on yeah. how we're going to be doing that. But I guess one of the benefits for Alabama is you get almost completely healthy for this game. You got some nice time off. So you can rest up. You can get, you can get Deontay Lawson. Closer to healthy. He wasn't healthy at the end of the season. He gutted out a couple of performances. Real tough, good player. That he can get healthy. He's a difference maker at inside linebacker. Get Jalen Key fully healthy. Uh, we'll see where Jace McClellan is. Obviously he missed the SEC championship game. Went down in the fourth quarter of the Auburn game. We didn't see him. We haven't seen him since. So um, those are a few key guys that you're looking for. You know, I, I think it's interesting in this game because J.J. McCarthy is, I mean, according to the insiders, the guy's got a ton of talent. Yeah. Never has to really do anything to win games. They because, don't call him. Yeah, they just don't have to. But now he's going against two cornerbacks, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I thought I saw earlier that both – Kool-Aid and Terion are your first team All-Americans yeah. at corner. I can't remember if that was AP. That might have yeah, been AP. AP. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, the guy that we talked about first on this show, Caleb Downs was third team. That's crazy. As a freshman. As a freshman, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Terion, the uh, the progression of that kid has just been it's, it's been amazing. Am it's amazing what confidence can do for you. It, it really is because you know he's always had the athleticism. Yeah. And the crazy thing is. He goes from a guy that was criticized by Alabama fans Didn't want him. early in the season yep. to a guy now that you want coming back, but he won't be coming back because he's going to win the first round. And think about this. Lane Kiffin went at him two years straight years in a row. Number three. And I, yeah, and I think 
I think this year when Ole Miss targeted him again and he stood up to that challenge, I think his game's only taken off. Of yeah, yeah. Um, but you wonder about that matchup. Is J.J. McCarthy going to have to make some yeah. throws against this defense yeah. that has just been lights out? You would think so because you, you, the recipe for success traditionally against Alabama is you don't just line up and run it at them. Now, Michigan is very good at doing that, and that's a nightmare scenario for Alabama because Michigan wants to shorten the game. If they keep running, they run it three times, keep picking up first downs, one, it's going to wear your defense out. And two, it's, it's going to keep your offense on the sideline and give you fewer possessions for you to, to use an offense that it wasn't in the beginning of the season, but now it's an offense that's pretty explosive. Yeah. And so, you know, it, you would think this sets up well for Alabama because Alabama traditionally stops the run. Yeah, and look, and, and I don't think you can just replicate this, but that first drive Georgia had on Alabama in the SEC championship yeah. game, if you're, if you're Michigan, you take a look yeah. at that. Yeah. Absolutely, and then Alabama made the change, and then I think Nick Saban the, the talked rest about is history. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they made some you know defensive wholesale changes there, and that changed the complexion of that game. But Michigan's got good players; they're good in the trenches, and so. But of the four teams, I, I like this matchup. Okay, so uh, yay Alabama, Aaron Suttles. Um, there is a reason they have two, not one, but two All-American cornerbacks. It's because of yeah. the collective. Yeah. Um, how can people get involved, and how can they keep this talent churning? Yeah, yay-alabama.com backslash fans. There's a membership level for uh, for every level that you feel comfortable giving. There, there's one that starts off that's about the same price as a Netflix subscription, and uh, you can keep a Ryan Williams who just reclassified, and I'm telling you, He's, if you watched him in the Super 7 the other night, he's incredible. Lance, his first, he had his so first how, two catches, he, 140. His first two catches, he went for 140 and two touchdowns. He's uh, unbelievable. Uh, is he 16? No, I think he's, a, well, he might, he actually might be. <laughs> but here's the people that I talk to that know football around this state have told me. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying he's the next, like, a, a direct comparison. But I've been told he's the best wide receiver talent in this state since Julio Jones. Oh, wow. And that was like, you know, we always, um, we really never talked recruiting. We always did National Signing Day. But I still think to this day Julio Jones is probably the most talked about recruit that I've ever covered. I remember they were talking about this kid when he was in eighth grade, Julio. And like, not just like recruit Knicks, like people who were like, you know, were sort of around the sport and knew who he was when he was a sophomore, knew who he was when he was a freshman. And again, he's, Julio is a different species, man, the way he was just physically put together, but in terms of just talent. And then ended up having a better NFL than yeah. college career. I mean, first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, can you opinion. imagine if Julio would have played with Bryce or Tua? No, it would have been unfair. But Ryan Williams has got that gear, and um, he reclassified today, still verbally committed to Alabama. I know Auburn is uh, talking a lot about flipping him, so we'll see where that, that turns out. But uh, if you want players like that to continue to choose Alabama, you got to give us a, a pretty big war chest. So... Angel's Envy is one of those bourbons. It's, it's on a short list when a lot of people talk. Yeah, it's good. You know, really good it's tough quality. to find in Alabama. It is. Yeah. And the allocation, it's just, it's, it seems like, you know, I was in Florida. We were at the Fort Bama this past week. And you can find everything there. Isn't that everything. frustrating? Like, they had a shelf of Buffalo Trace. i never forget. We were in, it was, uh, I guess it would have been last year, 2022, down in, uh, down in LSU. And, you know, their press box is connected to their, their suites. And they were rolling a cart, a full two-level cart of Buffalo Trace to the press box. I'm like, <laughs> where do I get on this train? Yeah, you knew where you were, though, <laughs> in Baton Rouge. Uh, but this is really the tasting. Uh, it says a gold color laced with reddish amber hues, yep. uh, nearly copper in tone. Uh, Berber's, it's finished in the port wine. We, yep. we said that. Uh, it says on the palate a little vanilla, ripe fruit, yep. maple syrup. Toast and very, and very vanilla. For those who don't like a lot of spice, this will uh, you get that first sip out of the way. This is very very mellow. It really is. Yeah. This would be something that you know Dunaway doesn't like spice. This would be a Dunaway. Yeah. No, whiskey. I like. I mean, I like spice, but this yeah. is really good. Yeah. It says it's got a a, uh, a hint of toast. You taste toast. <laughs> Not a piece of toast. <laughs> Bitter chocolate. Uh, the finish is clean and lingering sweetness with a hint. Uh, that slowly fades. So there you go. Angels Envy, good stuff. Again, Great we stuff. appreciate Beverage Place Pink Absolutely. Package. So are there any storylines with this Alabama team leading yeah. up to the Rose Bowl? I think the continued progression of this wide receiving core. Remember last year, this was a wide receiving core that took a lot of hits because they did, had a lot of drops. Bryce Young could not uh, r really rely on them. That storyline continued into the fall scrimmage. We were talking about this yeah. at the start of the season, how many drops this wide receiver core. And now you're looking around – 
Uh, Jermaine Burton goes off against Texas A&M. Has a great game against Texas A&M. Uh, Isaiah Bond has become the biggest playmaker yeah. on that offense. You're starting to see Jam Miller now. We saw him catch some passes in the LSU game. We saw him catch a pass against Georgia. He's becoming a weapon out of the backfield in terms of targets. I still think they can exploit the tight ends more. I think Amari Nybeck's a huge weapon. I think C.J. Dupree is more than just a blocker. He could be a, a weapon. So I just think now I mean, he's still pretty much a one-read quarterback, Jalen Milrow, but he's getting more comfortable. And there's no denying that he is better and more confident than he was at the beginning of the season. And I think that only helps his passing game going forward. You know, when we talked about those receivers early on, you know, we were trying to figure out who's going to be the leading receiver. Yeah. And Ja'Cory Brooks was a guy that came yeah. up. Malik Benson was a guy that came up. Much hyped. And yeah. he's had some big catches. You know, yeah. he, but it just – the targets aren't there the way this Alabama offense has been. And, and as I said, it's Jalen, who, by the way, did you see this, is now the 2024 betting favorite for the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, I, I thought he would be if yeah. he came back. So, And I think that's another reason to come back. You know, I, yeah. I don't know if it was the, you that I talked to, but there were people out there, you know, Anthony Richardson. You know, is this the next guy? And and I'm sure there would be a team or a few teams that would be high on him, you know, late first, early yeah. second possibly. But if you're Dale Milrow, why not come back, cash in yeah. on probably seven-figure NIL deal yeah. I, and, and continue to get reps? I think that's the right move for him. Again, I'm never going to tell someone how to, to handle their business, particularly when it comes to financial stuff. But I think you can clear, still clearly see that he's a one-read quarterback. Now, he's gotten better. I think the game is slowing down for him. And the next step in his progression – is for him to scan the whole field and to go through progressions. And, and that's what you're going to have to do in the NFL level. Yeah. This is Bama and Bourbon. It's brought to you by our friends at Gutter Cap. Uh, call all C Stu today, 823 2212. That's 205 823 2212. Last thing you want to do after a long day at work is come home and get on the roof. It's a dirty, dangerous job. You fall, you snap the neck and die. You're no good to the wife or kids. Cap it, don't snap it. Free estimate right now, 205 823 2212 or guttercapbirmingham.com. I see you, uh, you're, you're rubbing our nose in the Otani. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only, I mean, can you imagine getting seventy million a year guarantee? You get two players, yeah. and not just two players, two all stars at two different positions. But you wonder how he's going to come back once he because he can't throw until twenty twenty five, or at least can't pitch until twenty twenty five. So you just wonder, you know, what's and how he going they to be him. like? Yeah, because yeah, at that time he's going to be thirty one years old. But, but an international city like L A, bring in the Asian market. That's it. Makes sense for them to get oh, all that yeah, money. Look, and they they've got funny money. I mean, they've always. You know, what's crazy is you get one championship in the last 1988 to, to 2020. Yeah. So one championship since 88 with crazy. all that money. Yeah. It really is. Baseball's hard to win, man. You, you just need, as the Braves showed us a couple years ago, you get hot at the right time. Yeah. And the, and the Braves this year were the best team in baseball all year, and then just you ran up against what the hot happens. team. Uh, so speaking of injuries, because yeah. we were talking about Shohei, um, Jace McClellan. Yeah. I'll be curious to see. I, I think they got a plan. It just depends on all how his body responds to it, and and that's true of. Any and it's injury. more that like I don't necessarily think Alabama has to have Jace to win. No. I think Roy Dell and Jam are more than capable right now. Yeah. But you want it for Jace, the player, you know, to be able to play in this on this stage, a huge stage for him. And he's a complete back. Can do. Can catch the ball. Can can block. And obviously can run. But listen, Roy Dell. Impressed me against Georgia. Yeah. I mean, so he's earned that opportunity, too. And I, I was wrong about it because I thought this offensive line would be hit the ground running from start. I thought Jam would be sort of your leading rusher this year. But I still think he shows you plenty of flash. And they've carved out a little more of a role for him. But, yeah, I, I hope Chase is back. And when they start practice, I'm I'm curious to see what information starts leaking. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though. You've been following the perimeter a long yeah. time. And this, just for whatever reason, just maybe the history between the programs, uh, the history of the Rose Bowl, it seems like um, maybe the most historic game I can remember. And I know 2009 was big. Nick Saban played yeah. for his first national championship. You know, rematches against Clemson, against Georgia for the national championship. It just seems like something about this game. I don't know. It's just you're playing number one yeah. you're you're playing in the legitimate rose bowl at that yeah. time yeah. and the only, the only other one that, that comes to mind would have been notre dame just the historical yeah. Im implication because alabama if those people, of, i was in the taxi yeah. line legitimately at halftime <laughs> that game was over yeah. in the first quarter but like for for a certain generation of alabama fans who had to live through the 70s of notre dame's excruciating close yeah. wins over coach bryant um, I, I think that one had some some pizzazz to it, but but this is you start thinking about this game, the Rose Bowl in that setting, 
Which is a phenomenal setting. It's a crappy stadium. I'm going to be honest with you. Crappy stadium. Yeah. Great setting. No, I, I agree. Like in the front where you see maybe the best, best neon sign yeah. in the world, yeah. it looks kind of cool there. Yeah. And if you're yeah. up, whether you're in the press box or in the stands looking yeah. up, the St. Gabriel's. Yeah. I mean, it's in, really cool there. Unbelievable. But when you start to look around, <laughs> legitimately, 2013, I'm at the... Um, the national championship Auburn Florida State and I'm on the top row and it's a chain link fence behind me. Oh. And on the other side people are, you know, eating churros and cotton yeah. candy and it's yeah. it's a carnival. It's it's a bad stadium, but it's a historic setting. And then you start thinking about Michigan, the all time leader in wins in college football history. I think Alabama's was number two yep. now. And Michigan's been playing football longer. So you you start thinking about that. And then on top of that, I'm curious to see if Nick Saban sort of taps into this. Alabama's been, been the, the, the subject of a lot of vitriol. A lot of people across the country did not want Alabama in this game. I don't think Michigan fans. Oh, no. That video that leaked from Michigan's watch party, yeah. Michigan didn't want Alabama yeah, in this the game. Yeah, the one dude's like, <laughs> so what? Alabama's been hearing about how they didn't deserve this for over a month, probably, heading into this game, or close to a month. So uh, I'm curious how they tap into that. But Michigan's a quality football team, and... Um, I'm excited to, to go back to the Rose Bowl for the first. This is my first time back since Alabama played Texas. Saturday. You know, I, I wonder for Nick Saban, because Nick Saban seems like he is enjoying the moment a lot more yeah. this year. Yeah. And you wonder, a guy that coached at Michigan State, a guy that has got Midwest ties, how big this game is for him, because I guess this will be his first Rose Bowl, right? The BCS Championship wasn't the Rose Bowl, right? Right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, aside from that Rose Bowl that was in Arlington, this is yeah. the first Rose Bowl. So that's in I just wonder how setting. much it means to him. And, I, and with that said, like I said before the season, I've just got a feeling this is it for him. Um, I don't know. I mean, you never can predict yeah. this stuff, really. Do you? I mean, there is a contingent of fans out there that believe if they do win the national championship, it's he's tough. done. It's, it's tough not to ride into the sunset. I, I would keep coming back to what else does he want to do. I have noticed he has talked about, and I'm surprised it hasn't been brought up on the recruiting trail against him he has talked more openly about how tired he is this year um he said it uh in the post game press conference of the sec championship game asking if uh this sort of energized him and he's like do you have any idea how tired i am right now i mean that's him putting that out there and you would think eventually the foes are going to seize upon that I, I tend to think with a recruiting class i mean look if this was a guy that's walking away he made every visit last week he was on planes he was in texas he was in florida he's he was in chattanooga he did the uh the show uh, with Pat McAfee from an airport hangar in Chattanooga. If this is a guy that's walking away, his work ethic hasn't changed one bit. So that, that sort of points to me that he's going to come back. But and, and I think it's a fascinating year, too, if he was to walk away, if they were to win a national championship. Yeah. You know, it is one of the top two or three jobs in all of college football. But, like, I have no idea who they would hire. I don't either. I don't have any inside information. I, th I think they would kick the tires on Mike Norvell. Um, Dan Lanning, possibly. Dan Lanning. Those would be my first. Mm -hmm. And Dan Lanning would be my number one. Because I think Alabama needs to embrace. Its fans already have. Alabama needs to be to embrace being the villain. Like, yeah. people do not like Alabama. So lean into that. Be Darth yeah. Vader. You know what that means? It means you're good. Yeah. And, and Dan Lanning is that guy. He's that cocky. He's that brash. He's going to talk trash to Dion after the game. Yeah. I mean, that's See, him. I actually think Kalen DeBoer is a better coach. But Kalen DeBoer seems like one of these guys, if, if he was offered a job like Alabama, would stay at Washington, yeah. West Coast guy, and, you know, the I money's not going to be much different. jump to Alabama. It, yeah. I, the thing is, man, you've got to have a, a just a killer mentality because, hmm. like, I, I'm one of those guys probably who stay at Washington because I can do things that haven't been done since Don and James. you're not the most famous guy on the stage. Yeah. And you don't have and to deal I, with that pressure. And I really don't want to follow Nick Saban. Yeah. I, and I get that. But I do know the guy, whoever follows Nick Saban, is going to be have a roster like who was it Larry at Miami? Yeah, Larry Coker. Larry Coker at, at yeah, Miami. what it reminds me of is if Les Miles and Ed Orgeron both won championships. It was Nick Saban that got that thing on the right path. Yeah, and so I think Alabama. I mean, you would have to to dick this thing up. It would take a lot of work, man. The, the one thing that you never know is is what do the board of trustees at Alabama want? And, and and they they sort of still strike me as there's a way we do things at Alabama, and being cocky and brash is not really their way. So I don't know that they would go that way. He'd be my first call, but there's a reason why I'm not on the board of trustees. But Mike Norvell, rebuilding Florida State and recruiting, I think they have a top five recruiting class right now too. Um, he's a guy that you'd, ha you'd obviously have to, and you probably have to make the phone call just out of respect to Dabo. Just, yeah. I don't think he's taking it, but just to get his opinion and, and to make him feel important. And obviously he played at Alabama, coached at Alabama. So 
Those are three guys that they'll, they'll we'll probably look at. Uh, Bama and Bourbon, always brought to you by our friends at the Beverage Place. Pink Package, right off of Highway 280. Get in see J.J. Chan. They were nice enough to bring us the Man, Angels in really good. I've already, I'm already done. Yeah, well, you want to? You wanna... No, I need to. Okay. I got to drive. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, pick up a bottle of this at uh, either location, Beverage Place, right there next to PGA Superstore on Highway 280, Pink Package, located across from the Target next to Arby's on Highway 280. And once again, yay, Alabama. How can people get involved? Yeah, it's it's a key time. We, we've got to start supporting all these sports. Yay-Alabama.com backslash fans. And you can see the membership um, levels there. And, and we're always working um, to – create experiences for our members to make you feel like, listen, I, I want our members to feel like, you know what, this happened a couple of Saturdays ago, you did that. You did that. You helped beat Georgia. You didn't put on a pad and you didn't have any input in the game plan, but you supported Alabama and everyone that's a member or has donated to the collective, the entity of the Alabama, you had a hand in Alabama's 30th SEC championship, and I want you to feel proud about that. So every week we do this, Bama and Bourbon on Roll Tide Pods. Make sure you like, subscribe, give us that thumbs up. We really appreciate that. If you know somebody that likes Bama or Bourbon or both, Tell them about a us. Of, a lot of people out there do like both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, big fan, though. Uh, have a wonderful week. We'll come back next week. More Rose Bowl, more hoops. Because, yeah. as Aaron said, two big I'm heading out to Arizona. Up. Are you really? I'm going to go out. We're, we got an Airbnb out in Scottsdale. So, was that the, the reason you guys got that? Was for the game? Yeah. Okay. But I showed, that shows you the yeah. picture. It's oh, pretty yeah. legit. Yeah, he's got a good, good setup <laughs> there. So, we'll need some, uh, some posts from yeah. you out there. Uh, anyway, uh, guys, have a wonderful week. Be safe, and we'll uh, talk to you next week here on Bama and Bourbon. Thank <laughs> you.